Welcome everyone to our time of worship this morning for Good Friday, as we remember Jesus giving his life for us, for our salvation. We come to praise God together for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Let's sing together. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Let's join in prayer together. Our Father God, on this special day of the year, we pause to remember Jesus on the cross for the sins of the world. We come to thank you for his sacrifice, which brings us life. We come to thank you for that love expressed even in death. So help us in this time to draw close to you, to realise afresh just how much you love us. God shows his love for us like this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So help us to receive your love afresh this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to hear the story of the crucifixion this morning. Let's follow it 
from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 27, starting at verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today. You will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. And the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. Let's take a few moments to reflect on Jesus and his death for us on the cross. And now let's sing of God's love for us. Here is love, vast as the ocean.
crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide Through the flood gates of God's mercy Float a vast and gracious tide Grace and love like mighty rivers Poured in sin from above And hymns peace and perfect justice Kiss the guilty world in love On Good Friday, all our thoughts are of Jesus on the cross. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. There is one of the most amazing, incredible things that Jesus said. Father, forgive them. What things do you pray for most when things are going well? There's probably a long list of requests you make to God. When you're tired or busy, you probably have a, a shorter list of real needs and closer personal concerns. When life's at its hardest, I guess most of our prayers are for ourselves. Perhaps we can spare a prayer for our family or friends in great need. When Jesus' life was almost at an end, when the pain was worst, Jesus didn't pray for himself. Jesus didn't pray for his mother Mary watching nearby. He didn't pray for his dear disciples, John at the foot of the cross, Peter and James further away, or all the other disciples. Jesus didn't pray for the church, which would come into being following his death. At the moment of greatest agony, instead, we find Jesus praying for his enemies, praying for the very people who were murdering him. Not praying in revenge that God's judgment and punishment would fall on them as they were torturing and executing him. Instead, he was praying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Praying for forgiveness. If we follow Jesus in the 24 hours on his way to the cross, we see how those enemies were treating him. False accusations by the leaders of the Jews, condemned by Pontius Pilate for speaking the truth, rigged trials, unjust imprisonment, misunderstanding and jealousy. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Flogged without cause, crowned with thorns, the barbaric torture and, and the mocking of the soldiers and Jesus prays, Father, forgive them. The bystanders, the chief priests, the elders, the teachers of the law, Pilate, soldiers, even his own disciples letting him down. Lone and friendless now he climbs the cruel hill. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And ending with the innocent dying while the guilty Barabbas get off scot-free. It's all fair, and yet Jesus prays, Father, forgive them. Those were the people Jesus was praying for. Those were the people Jesus was forgiving. While Jesus was dying, he was praying for his enemies. And of course, that's what the cross was all about, to bring forgiveness. 
On the cross, God was changing enemies into friends. One man who was innocent dying in the place of all who were guilty. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you were under the same sentence. We're punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Everybody who puts their trust in Jesus' death and resurrection can know that forgiveness of sins and that certainty of eternal life. We can share that wonderful promise. Today you will be with me in paradise. And that's why we find Jesus on the cross praying for his enemies. Father, forgive them. Accept my sacrifice. Accept my death instead of theirs. This is the good news of the gospel. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So that we can be reconciled to God. Father, forgive them. And Jesus was not just praying for those who were around him. He was praying for us, for you and for me, that we would be forgiven that God would change us from his enemies into his friends. This is the good news that we've received and believed for ourselves. This is the good news God sends us out into the world to share. Father, forgive them. Jesus prayed and Jesus forgave. These words of Jesus point us to the way of our salvation. They reveal to us the character of God we serve. They also give us two examples to follow, an example of praying, an example of forgiving. And just as Jesus prayed for his enemies before they received forgiveness and became God's friends, so we are called to pray for people who are still God's enemies, cut off from God by their sins, to pray that they will find forgiveness and new life in Christ. And as we pray for others, we are also called to forgive them. If there is anything to forgive, prayer without action is rehearsal without performance. We pray for our enemies. If anybody has hurt us, we must then go on to forgive them from the bottom of our hearts. Jesus calls us to forgive all those who have harmed us, not only for their sake, but for our own. As a wise man said, he that demands mercy and shows none ruins the bridge over which he himself is to pass. Prayer and forgiveness. Jesus prayed for those who were murdering him. He forgave all who were hurting him by action or rejection or neglect. He calls us to do no less. This is the heart of the cross. Father, forgive them. So let's sing of God's amazing love for us. How deep the Father's love for us. <laughs> How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mother chosen one bring many sons to Shame. 
So let us spend a little time reflecting on Jesus and his sacrifice for us on the cross. Let's come and spend a few moments in silent reflection and meditation on those words of Jesus. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood. Sealed my pardon with his blood, hallelujah, what a saviour. Guilty, vile, helpless we, spotless lamb of God was he, full atonement can it be, hallelujah, 
what a saviour. Our Father God, once again, we thank and praise you for this gift of love, this sacrifice which has brought us life. Help us to receive your love afresh. Help us to follow in Jesus' footsteps, praying for others, forgiving others. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in giving that we receive. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let's join together in a prayer for Good Friday. The words are coming on the screen. Join with me in praying. O oh Jesus, on this day we remember your death, the day your light went out from the earth. We sit in the darkness today, remembering the trials you faced on our behalf. You have borne our sin and made the ultimate sacrifice to save us. Today, as we recall your final hours, we consider a world without you, and hold on to the hope we know we have in you. Lord, bring our hearts ever closer to you. We do not want to live in a Good Friday world without you. We want you and your light in our lives. We believe in you. We want to follow you all the days of our lives. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and fill this world with your light, we pray. Amen. And let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's come and receive for ourselves the blessings that God gives us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. We sing this as a prayer together. <laughs> of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be a sin the double cure save from wrath and make me pure Tears for 
As we come to the end of this time sharing together, let's turn all our microphones on so that we can bless one another by saying the grace together. The grace of the Lord, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen.